It's Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to do something special. And this is the first, uh, hopefully the first, of uh, a few of these videos. Uh, and what, and if you've uh, joined me in the uh, live chat for my premieres, uh, I talked about this last night. So always, uh, always try to join in those live chats because they do like to uh, talk about what's coming up. And uh, I do like to bounce ideas off of the, uh, the regulars, the crowd in the live chat. So always keep an eye out for those. But what we're doing today is the first what I call a retro review, where I'm going to take a look at a classic comic and um, give you my thoughts on it, give you, uh, give you uh, maybe a little uh, sort of um, uh, director's commentary, uh, well, actually more of a, a fan's commentary, uh, as I go through the issue. And we're starting with the X-Men. Okay, and I'm going back to the 1963 uh, original X-Men. And I'm taking a look at the one of the, the Epic Collection, Marvel's Epic Collection, uh, which compiles the first uh, the first bunch of issues of the X-Men. And I really recommend these epic collections. I, I I'm guessing they're pretty popular because Marvel keeps pumping them out. Uh, and I know I, I grab up a lot. Um, and they do collections like this of their classic comics uh, where they do, you know, the first dozen or so of, of all of their uh, main series. Uh, but they'll also collect a lot of um, offbeat stuff, uh, you know, some runs that weren't a story arc, but they're just like a, a, a gathering of uh, seemingly random issues. So I, I recommend keeping an eye out. Okay, so we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the first issue of the X Men. Now, something to keep in mind, and there we have there we have the cover, the number one. Really simple cover, but it's become iconic nonetheless. You know, it doesn't have the the action of Fantastic Four number one. Um, or the drama of uh, Amazing Fantasy or Amazing Spider-Man number one. But um, it shows off the whole team, and it gives you Magneto, the arch enemy, uh, and it's become a very iconic image in comic book history. Um, the X-Men, uh, the and this is the original team, uh, this was 1963, uh, by 1963, the Marvel age was really um, it was really underway, and Marvel had scored big hits with um, the Fantastic Four, the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, the X-Men were, believe it or not, were not like a, a, an A-list book. It was a bi-monthly book, which um, which definitely suggested it wasn't a big seller. Um, but it, it, it was not uh, as big of a book as the FF or Spidey. Um, and it was definitely trying to cash in on the FF formula. It was definitely trying to replicate that formula. And, and we'll see uh, as we go through this. Okay, so this was uh, written by Stan Lee, drawn by Jack Kirby, and inked by Paul Reinman. Um, hmm, uh, it, it, it's not what we consider um it's it's not on a par with what we may know of as kirby's uh work and uh it's smoothest work uh it's not it's not certainly not kirby uh you know the the mid run on the ff inked by joe sinnott um it's a little rougher a little inconsistent in places but like a lot of this early marvel stuff it's it's got its charm now speaking of early marvel stuff when i look at the these issues too um, you know, when, when I give a, a review, I'm definitely putting the, the, uh, these books in, in context, in their historical context. And, and that's something a lot of uh, new readers, younger readers have a hard time doing. You know, they read this stuff and they knock it or they make fun of it uh, because a lot of it either seems hokey or campy or, or, or just plain quaint. But um, one thing we got to remember is this stuff, whether we want to admit it or not, 
it was written for young boys. Okay, I'm not even saying children because it was specifically written for boys. The, the girls, they read Archie. They, they, read, they read girls comics. This stuff, the superheroes, this was believed to be read, whether it was or not, but it was definitely aimed at the young boys that they believed were their, were their primary market. So we got to keep that in mind. Uh, they weren't, they weren't, nobody working on this believed they were writing uh, great adult literature. This wasn't the age of The Watchmen or The Dark Knight Returns. They were just writing a simple superhero comic book and trying their best to imitate the Fantastic Four. All right, so let's get into it. Now, the, the story opens up uh, introducing us to the X-Men. Um, and remember, this is the original team. And at this point, it's pretty much Professor X, uh, Cyclops, Iceman, Angel, and the Beast. A um, couple of interesting things. Uh, again, they're really trying hard for that Fantastic Four formula. The Beast is very much, um, he's very much the thing at this point. He's, he's even his dialogue is written with that, um, sort of uh, brutish kind of New Yorker speech. Um, he speaks in slang. Uh, later on, the Beast, of course, would be the, um, the brains of the team. He'd be the, the super smart one of the team who was known for speaking with um, big words and, uh, you know, just being very smart and being very bookish and literate. Uh, but there, we don't see that just yet. He's he's pretty, uh, kind of hot tempered. He has that that testy relationship with Iceman, and it's very much uh, similar to the relationship between I, uh, the Thing and the Torch over in the FF. Iceman very much fits the the Torch uh, mold mold in this uh, in this team on this team. Um, he's the junior member. Uh, interestingly enough, we actually get an age for Iceman in this issue. They, they, they very clearly, if you look in this, you know, down here, they say astonishing is your reflexes are astonishing for a 16 year old. So we know that Iceman is 16 here in their first adventure. And, uh, earlier still, they say, uh, uh, I'm a couple years younger than the others. So we can assume the math being kind of iffy, but the others are probably 17, 18 uh, years old. The beast, the beast is um, named as the oldest. So I don't know if, if that is, um, if he's actually a whole year older or if he is just, uh, the first to be 18. But we can assume at this point in time, um, they're all about 18, uh, most of them are about 18 years old, with Iceman being 16. Uh, Cyclops, interesting thing about Cyclops, um, they show him using the visor and needing to open the visor in order to release his power. Um, I've been over this uh, repeatedly, uh, you know, and I always do a read through before I'm, I'm going to talk about this, but I can't find any mention that he needs the visor to hold back his optic rays. Um, uh, so I, th that may not have been a part of, uh, of, of the character yet. Uh, he uses the visor, but they, they don't say anything about needing the visor to hold it back. At least, at least not yet. So first few pages, they're mixing it up in the danger room. Um, I'm not sure if they called it the danger room or not. They certainly don't call uh, the place the X Mansion yet. Um, Jean Grey shows up. We see Jean Grey right there. And she meets the guys. Uh, and there they are in their civilian attire. Uh, Hank McCoy, Hank McCoy the Beast, he would later... Uh, get glasses. He he does not have them yet. Uh, again, it's not it's not intellectual Hank just yet. In fact, he's he's kind of a, of a brutish guy in this. Um, but uh, it's it really seems as though Gene is meeting Professor X for the first time here. 
I know later on in X-Men lore, um, they would uh, retroactively add to her backstory where she had met Professor X and he did treat her when she was a, a little girl. Um, but there's no, there's no sign of that here. Uh, so the X-Men, they meet Jean, and of course, all these guys are all hitting on her big time, especially the Beast. Look at that masher. Again, he's not, a he's not the smooth, intellectual Hank of later. We meet Magneto. Uh, interesting thing about Magneto, uh, there is no hint at all, um, of Professor X having any history with Magneto. Uh, and also, too, this is Magneto in his purest form. And I know a lot of people, I'm in the minority here, I know, but a lot of people love the backstory that would later be added to Magneto, where he's a, a Holocaust survivor, um, and, and he's sort of, uh, you know, kind of the mutant uh, freedom fighter. Uh, you know, at the beginning, Magneto was just a jerk. You know, he, he, yeah, he believed in mutant superiority, but, you know, he wanted to rule everybody. He wanted to enslave everybody, humans and mutants alike. So, and, and I kind of like that. I don't like the, uh, the sanctified Magneto that we would get later. I know a lot of people believe that gives him more dimension, more character. Uh, I think it's just excuse making. Uh, I think I think that's retroactively changing the character. Um, now you know one thing about this issue and and about pacing in general back back in the day, they really knew how to pack an issue with story. And I know you know nowadays, and I'm I'm certainly not advocating that we write books like this again, but there there you 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 had any one issue of of these comics would have about 6 months worth of story of today's comics you know in this issue we see we're introduced to the team magneto takes over a nuclear base an ar an army base and the x men are turned loose uh the x men go to go to stop them um we do get to see angel at this time he he wears that harness that straps his wings down so he could wear clothes. Um, yeah, that always that always stretched my own uh, my own suspension of belief. Um, that that always just seemed painful to me and 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 unfortunate that the angel had to do that. Um, but that's what he was doing back then. So the X Men show up at this military base that Magneto is invading. They fight Magneto. Um, really the Angel and Cyclops get a lot of screen time during the fight, especially in, in the, uh, second half of it. It's really Mag, uh, Cyclops' show and he really gets to shine. In the end, Magneto gets away. He'll be back very soon. Um, but that's the issue. Uh, a really packed issue, uh, action packed, uh, a lot of story in it. Uh, you're really introduced to many cornerstones of the X-Men mythology, the whole team. You, you get a really good introduction to the team, their purpose, why they're together, what makes them apart from other superhero teams. Uh, and you get a lot of action with their arch enemy, the character who would be their arch enemy. So overall, this is a very fun issue. The art, yeah, the art's a little, a little sketchy. It still has its charm, a little inconsistent. Um, and I don't want to knock Paul Reinman because he has done, um, I know a lot of people do knock him, but he has, he has done some very nice work elsewhere. So overall, I, gi I give this issue, I give this issue a four because it is just a lot of fun. It's a lot of excitement, excitement and story packed into the issue. Were I a kid in 1963, had I read this off the stands, I definitely would have been hooked and I would have been on, on board for, for more. So we are gonna be taking a look at more. So please tell me what you thought about this uh, review. Is this something you're interested in or do you want me to knock it off? Uh, and what do you think of the X-Men? Have you read this issue? Uh, am, I, am I 
close to the mark, do you disagree with everything I said? Uh, whatever your thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and as always, click like, subscribe, and uh, come back and uh, keep drawing. All right, I'll see you all in our next review. Bye-bye, everybody.